Good evening, sir. Good evening. Oh, so shall we get going? Mr. Akshay Puneet Shastri. Yes, sir. How are you? Fine, sir. Nice. Somebody is fine. Okay, so yesterday <clears throat> I was doing And I told you that uh, you can't call this uh, you can't possibly call this uh, utopian socialism for one simple reason and that is that when uh, Sir Thomas More wrote his work uh, utopia, there was neither capitalism nor was there socialism. This was the point that I was making yesterday. So let's try to wind up today quickly uh, with what utopian socialism is. Mm 
Utopian socialism as we know it is something that came much later. Much later than utopianism. And uh, Perhaps the uh, credit of utopian socialism should go to Saint Simon in French, Saint Simon in English, and to an extent the English philosopher William Godwin okay so This is basically what uh, utopian socialism is because utopian socialism does not precede capitalism. Okay, and without capitalism and individualism, you cannot talk about socialism. So when you talk about people like Sir Thomas More and to a certain extent, even uh, Ulrich uh, Zwingli, you are talking about socialism, uh, not socialism, I'm sorry. You're talking about some kind of, I gave you the example yesterday of a cornucopia and uh, this cornucopia is full and everybody is leading a wonderful life and nobody has a problem with anything. That is what we saw yesterday. Okay, so now if you look at the whole idea of utopian socialism as such. Utopian socialism came up as an alternative to capitalism. But it is not really much of an alternative. Really speaking, it's not at all an alternative because capitalism is a real thing Whereas utopian socialism is dreaming, okay? And uh, if you look at the different thinkers, they're all like poets, you know? When I say they're all like poets, what I mean is that they are looking at this wonderful situation that exists where everybody is happy, nobody is unhappy. So all these different things will come into uh, 
utopian socialism. But it is definitely a reaction to capitalism and to individualism which became the dominant paradigm of thought in the uh, modern period. You must understand, I've been through this before, but just for the sake of clarity again, I'm just going to make a small mention of uh, utopian uh, socialism. Utopian socialism is some kind of escapism. Okay, it is an escapism from the brutal individualism and capitalism that uh, rendered a number of people into poverty and made some of them into rich people. So it is in that background that you have to understand utopian socialism. Utopian socialism doesn't really have an agenda. When we come to Marx, which is what I intend to do, not today, I'm not keeping very well today, uh, but we'll pick it up tomorrow, most definitely. And uh, in that, what I would like you to understand is that uh, the individualism that you find in this particular time period is brutal each man for himself. If you don't mind, I'll repeat Hobbes. And uh, Hobbes was saying that life in the state of nature was nasty, short, brutish, and all those things. So, what we need to remember is the fact that utopian socialism is some kind of a poetic response to the brutality of capitalism and individualism. Now, one of the best examples, because I'm saying it's a poetic response, uh, one of the best examples that you can think of when you talk about poetic uh, uh, response, uh, the best example that you can think of is uh, Wordsworth. Okay, so if you look at Wordsworth, what is Wordsworth doing? Wordsworth, William Wordsworth, the poet, is trying to recreate a society based 
in nature, in the bounty of nature, not just nature, in the bounty of nature. And he's also basically trying to tell us that this is how we have to live and not like we are living in the modern period. Now, but for a poet or a painter, I had talked to you about Jericho. If you look at those people, you will find that they have the uh, liberty, so to speak, that comes with an art form to depict things the way they like. But when it comes to philosophy, philosophy is not a depiction of things as you want to perceive of, but it is something that is more in the nature of, uh, what should I say? Philosophy is more in the nature of finding solutions because i keep telling you again and again philos the word which comes from greek is about the world philosophy is a description of the world now the description of the world should not literally be taken only as description of the world it should be also taken as description of the world as it is and possibly possibly what kind of solutions you have to overcome the world as it is so these are the things that you need to remember now um, yes this is what uh, hegel does right not just material description of the world hegel i didn't get you Could no you... he he just doesn't describe the world not only in materialistic terms uh, he hmm. gives the examples of the spirit and all and he describes the world in two sense Right, yes, is what the, I'm trying to say. Yes, Hegel does that. Hegel yeah. is basically trying to overcome several things and we'll revisit uh, a little bit of Hegel when we start doing Marx and Marx as a young Hegelian uh, because Marx began his uh, political, philosophical career as a young Hegelian. But uh, a better example of uh, what you are saying is actually Karl Marx. I am not quoting Marx here because we haven't yet done Karl Marx. But you must understand one thing. There are a lot of people who look at Marx as having predicted how life should be or how life would be in a communist society that comes into being on its own. Okay. A lot of people basically see that, that the communist society that uh, Marx is talking about comes automatically. You don't have to do anything about it. You just have to fight a war on behalf of the proletariat. And lo and behold, you have this wonderful 
new society which is not at all true if you ask marx when marx is being extremely critical of capitalist society and if you ask him you're being critical about this what is the alternative to this okay that is the question that is implicit in marxian philosophy so what marx does is he offers you an alternative he offers you an alternative in the sense that marx is basically trying to tell you that society doesn't have to be like this we don't have to live like individuals who have to take care of themselves it is not each according to his ability but it is each according to his necessity so when marx portrays communism he is giving you a certain model the model that he is trying to give you is this particular model which will basically tell you as to how life will be different in the communist society as compared to the capitalist society marx was not an astrologer he did not say that you know communism automatically will replace capitalism he didn't say that if he said that then why would talk about revolution why talk about revolution what marx is saying is that whatever has happened till the capitalist period is what he calls prehistory it is prehistory because of the fact that it is something that people have not had a chance to author their own story okay please remember the root of the term history history is his story his story is the story of the human kind now marx will say as long as people did not author their own uh their own story then that is not history that is just prehistory so whatever happened till capitalism as far as marx is concerned is something that basically uh happened without the active intervention of the human being in authoring his or her own story so he therefore says that up to capitalism what we have is prehistory he says after the working class revolution after the liquidation of uh after the liquidation of classes where there is no difference between producers and uh, consumers when such a thing does not happen 
that is the beginning for him of history so he says it is with communism that we have the beginning of history now is it a prediction it's not a prediction what is marx trying to say when he says that from we move from prehistory to history he is trying to say that human society human beings will set their goals for themselves and they will move towards the reaching of those goals and these goals are based in what he called the slogan of the french revolution liberté égalité fraternité in english liberty equality and fraternity marx has a very interesting point to make there marx says that this particular thing of liberty equality and fraternity is not something you can achieve from within the confines of a capitalist society the reason why he says that is that capitalism thrives on exploitation there are people who don't work but own property they own lot of land they own money and there are people who work extremely hard but are living in poverty that is what marx will say so the idea that he gave was either to and i am quoting him verbatim here either to history has been not uh, has not been uh, written by people themselves okay so he says now is the time for people to write their own history now marx is not giving you a panacea by the way he is not giving you a panacea and saying once the revolution happens everything is fine a question was asked of him by vira zasulish where she asked him how would things be in the communist society you mean to say there'll be no contradictions between the rich and the poor will there be no strife in society marx said no i am not saying any of these things all i am saying is that in the future in the society of the future we are going to not have the problems that we have today now in trying to get rid of the problems that we have today if a new set of problems comes in if a new set of problems comes in then it is entirely up to the people living in that society which can be taken as a communist society to work their way around those problems that come that is what marx is basically trying to say and 
in fact this whole idea of utopian socialism is a marxian construct because marx is somebody who says these are people who are dreamers they are like poets they don't have any kind of an agenda as to how they are going to change the world it's only going to it's it's only going to be like you know interpretation of the world and that is why he says again hitherto the world has been interpreted by philosophers but the point is to change it so he is saying change it now marx at no point says that you will have to you can anticipate what the problems of the new society the communist society will be you don't really have a the thing about that you don't have control over that it is for people who are living in the, that particular society where there are problems cropping up it is there that you will see that people have to search for solutions marx will say i have given you a solution to overcome the problems of capitalism to overcome the problems of uneven distribution of wealth to overcome this problem of private property by those who don't work and no property for those who work he says this is the society i am looking at and this is the society which i don't want so if you have to get rid of this then you need to have a communist revolution and that is why he said workers of the world unite marx is not somebody who believes in the idea of a nation state for him a nation state is a creation of capitalism and therefore he would say that i am not truly bothered about what happened in the uh capitalist period except for the fact that there are people who didn't work and have got rich and there are people who have worked extremely hard and remained poor so marx is contrasting but the difference between utopian socialism and marxist socialism is to put in marx's own words marx believed that he had been able to penetrate the surface of a capitalist society he had been able to penetrate through and see the workings which people miss out people miss out on this i am able to see that and therefore i am suggesting that we have this revolution let's change the world that's what marx is trying to say there is a utopian socialists they are not trying to change anything like i said they are all dreamers some of them have good dreams some of them have not so good dreams but 
philosophy cannot be reduced to either poetry or to paintings like jericho turner and all of these people did you can't do that and when we were doing rousseau if you remember i told you rousseau despite being a romantic was forced to be a rationalist as well because what would be the difference between rousseau and jericho if rousseau also just painted a picture of things as he saw them marx is very right when he says that hitherto the world has been interpreted people have interpreted the world the point is to change it and change is not once it's not once when you get into a new society you will face new problems there and when you get into those new problems it is again your responsibility to basically take care of to take care of the uh what should i say the problems that keep coming up in a new society so marx didn't unlike hegel where hegel put a stop and said once the purpose of history has been realized then there is no need for history anymore marx is not saying that marx is talking about a dialectical spiral okay a spiral which is unending the only difference between marx and say somebody like rousseau and kant rousseau and kant drew a line they drew a line and they said we have to try and understand where we are in relation to this line and we will never ever reach that point in that line where the line and what you are thinking get conjoined because the line always moves ahead if you are at point 2 line has moved to point 3 if you are that's the antinomy if you are at point 4 line has moved to point 5 to overcome that again marx takes recourse to hegel he takes recourse to the dialectics but in the case of hegel the dialectics are purely a mental device they are purely a mental device to try and understand history to try and understand history to make sense of it so the world doesn't move dialectically for hegel what moves dialectically is our thought process our thought process moves dialectically but marx would say no it's not just the thought process history moves dialectically because he said all history is history of class war that is another thing he said there are many classes but there will be two dominant classes and it is 
these two dominant classes that come together, I mean, they don't come together, they come face to face with each other. And that is when society is ready for change. So that is the difference between utopian socialism and Marxist socialism. I'll stop here today. I've had a very rough day. Madam Padma will know why I had a rough day. <clears throat> I'd rather not say things here on YouTube. This is going to go there. So I don't know what language I was talking, what language other people were be speaking. So at the end of it, I had a splitting headache. So we'll stop here today. We'll pick up Marx tomorrow. Now there is a, a little bit of a confusion. Apparently tomorrow, our head of the department is organizing some kind of a jamboree commemorating the, the day when the constitution of India was adopted, November 26th. So it seems like they are celebrating Ambedkar tomorrow. So I don't know if there will be classes. I'm not sure if there will not be classes or if there will be classes. I believe there is a very big uh, meeting planned in the E classroom. I don't know where that is in Arts College, an E classroom. So in case, I will be coming to college tomorrow. In case we don't make progress in college, we'll have to pick the thread up again in the evening. Uh, sir, we have exam tomorrow. Really? Internal? Internal. Yeah. Which world am I living in? No, no, seriously. I have serious doubts about where I am living, what I am doing. Hmm. Our right. exam, three exams tomorrow and the other two day after. Good, good, right. good, good. Hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds excellent. Maria Jose Gomez Arrieta. Did I make sense with Karl Marx? Maria? I can't hear you, Maria. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Now I can't. Okay, you have a connection problem? Akshay Puneet Pantulu.
Yeah. Okay, Maria has a connection problem. But she could hear me perfectly. Now just type out if what I said made sense to you about Marx not being an astrologer. You agree? Very good. Thank you. Mm. She agrees. And see, I'm not a Marxist. Mm. I'm not somebody who is... Yeah, he made an interpretation of his reality. True. Let's not put labels on ourselves, you know, and say, I'm so and so, I'm so and so. That comes in the way of studying properly. So yeah. he was an observer of his society, yes, most definitely, most definitely. Okay, then write your exams tomorrow. So we'll have a class day yes, after sir. tomorrow. Yes, sir. Evening. evening. Yeah. Evening, yeah. Obviously. We'll have a class day after tomorrow evening. We'll carry on with uh, marks. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So excuse yes, me. Sir. Yesterday, uh, exam. Uh, the question is about the marks or Hegel. Sorry? Uh, for second internal, we will have the uh, exam tomorrow. Uh, because the uh, first internal was about the Hegel. And now second internal is about marks. Not really. Check out, check out, check out. Because I didn't finish Hegel in the first uh, internal. Okay. So check out. Don't worry. It's not difficult. I don't believe in penalizing people for marks. All I look for is sincerity. If you are sincere, if you are doing well, if you are paying attention, if you are thinking, if you are arguing with me, all those things I will take into consideration and give you marks. Okay. So don't worry about that. Okay? okay thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So don't worry about marks. So all the best. And uh, hopefully... We'll see what comes out. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Take care, sir. Rest well. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, Akshay, I'm happy to see you back. I've been missing you. Yes, sir. Hmm? Is it a temporary visit or... Uh... You are, I have been listening in uh, YouTube, sir. You're listening in YouTube. Okay. Thank you, Akshay. Very kind. Thank of you, me. sir. Okay. So, all the best to all of you. Don't worry about marks. I don't penalize people for marks. Okay. I don't penalize people for marks. So. But that doesn't mean take it easy and do whatever you want. Uh, write as well as you can. Yes, sir. Yeah. So thank you. 
see you tomorrow thank you sir thank you sir okay bye sir take care yeah bye